those scooters. Which we need to make sure the signs are revised wherever it says skateboard to say scooters. Because right now they're allowed to be in the mall, they're allowed to be on the promenade. Everywhere. Yep. Zipping by. They're officially not. Okay, good. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I got the roll here, so we, we're done. <clears throat> uh, let's look at the thing I sent you the other day. Okay. And this is the issue that we as a committee have been kicking around for quite some time. And it's, uh, I, I don't think it can be baked much more than it is. So uh, I, I'm of the opinion that we need to move it forward, get it to the council, and let the council decide what they want to do with it because that's our role. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, we think yep. up stuff, we try and solve problems, and we send up possible solutions. So let's, if we can, let's walk through this document because this is basically gonna be, I'm gonna ask the council to put me on the agenda for, thir for Tuesday night to make this PowerPoint presentation. This time, yes, yeah, unless, and unless, as we walk through it, you, you can tell me what you think and if the committee's in agreement with that. I just, I just got the draft agenda, so it's pretty robust. So you want to check with Aaron sooner rather than later. Okay. 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 All right. Just, just. All right. Yeah. So we'll look through this, and if everybody is, is uh, in accord with the general content and recommendation, we can proceed forward. Uh, it, it's really all about the, all about way, ways to fund whatever parking solution the city wants to come up with. It, w it came about as back in the uh, early part of this year when the council decided to, to assign tasks to the parking committee and the Amtrak committee. Mm -hmm. The parking committee was supposed to come up with a comprehensive plan. The Amtrak committee was supposed to come up with ways to fund that plan. Uh, it didn't go well with the parking committee for a lot of reasons, which we won't go into. But I think we as a committee need to press forward because I don't think we, we have the luxury of, of waiting much longer to at least front out a, a funding solution. Because the problem obviously is not going away. And, and if you can see, back in 1991, anybody remember, you remember Fred Coldwin, don't you? Sure, I helped throw him out of office. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for the minutes. In 1991, he's, he. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't close to that. Yeah. In, 19, uh, in, in 1991, in an Inquirer article about Cape May's parking problems, which is that, that headline right there, why Cape May is going around in circles, 1991, Philadelphia Inquirer. Yeah. Um, Fred said that we're chipping away at the problem, but the big solutions have been elusive. And that was 1991, which is, is correct. As late as 2019, our Cape May master plan, after studying this issue and studying previous master plans, basically came up with three pretty clear statements in terms of a parking problem. <clears throat> uh, they said it needs a comprehensive solution, which was the genesis of why we recommended some time ago that it be approached this way. They also said it should be given the highest priority in the planning process, which to me is not too equivocal. It means it's the highest priority. <laughs> it's probably the only problem in Cape May that they haven't been able to solve. And, that, and, and they came up with this, which is a relatively new idea, but it's true. And that Cape May's intent is to transition from a seasonal community to a year-round destination which is clear evidence that parking is not a seasonal, it's not going to be a seasonal issue as we go forward. If the city is able to transition from a seasonal community to a year-round community, it's gonna need year-round parking in some way, shape, or form. So given that as a context for why we're doing what we're doing, the next sheet reviews the kinds of things we have tried to do over the last 30 years and if you can see there's a trend in here, it's basically a piecemeal approach. It's doing little things, trying to patchwork some ideas, trying to patchwork some problems. Uh, one of the main themes that goes through this is 
uh, more parking meters and raising parking fees, mm -hmm. which to my mind, and you can disagree with me if you want to, but in my mind, that's not the way to solve a parking problem. That's the way to annoy the people who come to town to, put, to participate in our community. Uh, and raising parking meters fees, putting more parking meters out, does not provide more parking. It, it, I mm -hmm. mean, it just doesn't <laughs> yeah, provide more yeah. parking. They were always meant to, to move the, the yeah, But it's not working. Yeah. But let's be honest, charging an extra dollar an hour for parking isn't discouraging anyone that, yeah. from parking no, there. That's not going to be the thing that generates. No. They're, they're, they're moving or relocating to another spot. It's not. Well, the other. I yeah, mean, it may, right. it may have been the intention, but it's certainly I don't believe yeah. the result. Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, but for the purposes of what we're trying to do with, in terms of funding a comprehensive solution, parking meters aren't the answer to the funding source. They don't generate enough money. They do generate a lot of money, but not enough to make comprehensive changes in the way we. Not large scale comprehensive right, changes. Right. Yeah. And, and, and those dollars, as we know, are earmarked in the, in the budget as part of. They know, go to the general fund. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's not as if those, those monies no. Um, no. are available to be utilized in a different way. So For, forgive me, because being new mm. to this committee, but also being on the bike and pedestrian safety committee. I saw your meeting some, yesterday. Some of these discussions. Yeah. Have we ever really, really thought about becoming more of a pedestrian bike friendly town as in certain streets totally removing parking? I know that is like probably kicked me out the door, but strategically looking at lots across the city where, you know, if you have, your, yeah. if you have a house with a driveway, feel free to park there. If you're dropping off, that's fine, but you cannot park. Marco Island, you cannot park any, everybody has driveways, yeah. you gotta park, go period, to, end of story. Yeah. Go to uh, page three of- I, I did the look city. at it, and yeah. I wasn't sure whether- in, Well, in 2007, the city paid several hundred thousand dollars to a company called Roadside Harwell to do a comprehensive vision plan for the mm -hmm. whole city. One of those recommendations was to reduce street parking in the central district. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's it's an idea that's, it's an, it's in Annapolis, it's it's in, um, what's that town a in Michigan? A lot of out west, poor, I looked up some of the- Mackinac yeah. Island. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Right. Yep. And I think the discussion we had before the meeting started about LSVs and all these bikes, it, it, we just keep trying to pack 100,000 pounds into <laughs> 10 pounds. It's not gonna work. I, yeah. Well, and, and the challenge is, is that the, uh, many of those modes of transportation, let's be honest, are in conflict with one another. Um, and the people who are sometimes utilizing those modes of transportation are not following the standard sort of rules and regulations, which you know begs the question, public safety becomes the at-risk issue. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that um, this is a very large undertaking. Um, and the, what you've laid out here, Dennis, not to interrupt, it's, it's very comprehensive as to everything that's been looked at, evaluated, um, starts, stops, you know, left and right. Um, it does come down to looking at means to be able to fund a solution <laughs> that has, you know, longevity. Correct. That is just not a short-term solution. Correct. Dennis, um, is that study available? Can we get copies? Which one? The, the one from 2007. Uh, yeah, actually, I have it. I was on that committee. I'd like to, I'd like to read clearly it. Clearly, that would need, if, if that right. were, let's say, three to five years out, right. that's the way to go, we would need to fund that somehow. Either we're well, what I'm saying is if we did a study, 2007 is not that long ago. Right. Right. All right. It's still going to be, some of it will still yeah. be relevant. The we'll trends are, the, yeah, the it, trends it we is, all know is Let the me same. push back a little bit with mm -hmm. you, Mark. Amtrak's job is to find money. Sure. And, and uh, uh, on that plan, we suggest to council uh, at the beginning of the year, it was the it was a parking study committee's job to do what you're yep. suggesting yep. to do, and, and and so that's not going to happen because we don't have a parking committee. But I, I don't think Amtrak should take on that function. No, I'm just interested. Okay. For He's background just interested in the background information. Yep. Oh, yeah, well, I, you I, know, I, Dennis, too. I, I, I think if if the city could find a spot to park a thousand cars next week, it would be filled up, and there'd be another thousand coming. At some point, I, I think we're saturated, and you know we're, we're it's really well. We're not we're not going to be able to. Uh, do you, you know what I'm saying? What, what are we looking at 
here. It's, it's well, in the like, long term, you're right. There's an environmental and climate related, and I think that kind of goes to what Mary was saying, and that there's, yeah. you know, there, there, there may need to be more of a downtown restriction area. That, that but that's part of what um, once you would have the funding uh, available, right. then the ability to look at different scenarios like yeah. that, Bob, that says, and, okay, we need to be able to be creative. And, and let me, let me, we let knew me what put, we were looking at, you let me know, put a maybe con we could get a grant or something. No, so wait. We give Dennis a chance to yeah. do Sure. Well, yeah. Yep. Let me, let me uh, make a point here because take a look. Here's a visual. This, this one's called linear planning. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I have to tell you that in my time here, Bob, you've been here way longer than I have. Yeah, too long. But I've been, I've been in Cape May now for a quite a long time and I've been involved in planning at many levels and I have to fault the city for the way they plan it's just I'm sorry to have to say that but I have to do it it, it they this the, the planning model in the city is this page this linear planning model which page yeah it, this one here it's called it's it's this one it's, it's one right seven Bob it's a uh, the way the way things get planned what do we need yeah. mm -hmm. what is the need what solutions and then how can we fund it the city doesn't ever really get past the first block uh it just doesn't i don't i, want to, I don't want to be rude but that's basically the way it works if it does get to the second block there are so and, and you've seen this page shows you all the solutions we have it, it's always a piecemeal, uh, band-aid, uh, too narrowly focused proposal, and it oftentimes includes recommendations which delay the planning process. Because look at look at the first one, in 1986, uh, some we did a traffic and parking study. Uh, there hasn't been done there hasn't been one done since 2002. Yeah, yeah right. Another parking study. Yeah. On the parking that was a recommendation that was a parking study mm -hmm. <laughs> and and you, you uh it's like the old jerry seinfeld bit with, uh, with the airline yeah you can't count it. you know how to take the reservations you don't know how yes yeah. the car you took the, the reservation yeah, yeah. you took the reservation. you know you need planning but you never plan I, I don't want to be too rude so anyway so the planning model basically jams up itself when the, the city has not clearly identified a need, or if they have, they have not clearly identified a solution. And then the solution becomes savaged by uh, the realities of small town anywhere, uh, the politics of, of issues. It gets chewed up and never, never happens. So there's really no need to, to pursue funding because you're never gonna do it anyway. The model we wanna look at is the one on the next page, which is if you can identify your need, and this is where we are. We're, we're in the top block. M-Track is in the top block. We're looking for funding. We're going to be able to sh show you where you can get hundreds of thousands of dollars that you can then use to plan whatever it is you want to plan for. That, that's basically what we got here. Now. And then, and then if you have a funding, solu a funding solution, it may allow others to think about how you can use those funds to better improve. Exactly, and it also will it also will blunt what's always been the traditional opposition to anything new, is why do I have to pay for it? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a tax. But why do the taxpayers have to pay for it? I think this is the right. Yeah, I agree. This is the right approach. Thank for you. Us. I, I guess for my Amazon. question too, though, yeah. would you be looking at almost funding, and you have them, you know, on, t on top of each other, looking at some solutions and potential costs? Funding is our main purpose, right. but. I think, Somebody, I, I, I think I think at this point in time, and this is where we can get off track, unfortunately, to pardon the pun, is if just focusing on finding the funding, the solutions need to come from once that funding has been identified and, and secured in a way that allows the city council, another group of individuals to propose solutions. I think if we go too far off into that track, we're going to find ourselves back to where everyone else. I wasn't. Been. I wasn't I, suggesting. I, 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 okay. I wasn't suggesting oh, okay. we did the solution. Yeah. I was suggesting that there's another group who is behind the scenes, somewhat looking at not not making any definitive. Right. What? How much funding are we going to need for? I, I think that part of the, at least in my opinion, part of the challenge in the past is has been 
we don't, you know, it's sort of like saying, I want to go out and buy a car, and I don't even know how much I can afford. Mm -hmm. And so putting another group together to go out and try and come up with a laundry list of solutions, which with all, with due respect to the people who were on the parking committee, they were, they were doing that. But there really was no sense of whether or not that was even going to solve the problem. Right. Um, and so, I, I, in my opinion, that this is something that if the city has an identified funding source and it is consistent, uh, it's identified revenue and it's not earmarked for anything else, uh, and it does not you know, fall to the taxpayers, um, and Dennis has laid out where some of the ordinances need to be perhaps firmed up or addressed or et cetera. Then you say at the end of the day, look, this is what we've identified with regard to revenue that is realizable and is you know, within our current framework. Here it is, now. Now, now group B. Now you task <laughs> right. the city and the council to say, how are you going to address it? Yes. Because before it's always been point in this direction, point in that direction. Well, so. what's happened in the past, just recently in the last decade, is that, that the city has um, uh, acquiesced to the advisory committee concept, the plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, the city has, in its, in its organizational structure, it has no planning capacity. It has a budget capacity, it has a finance capacity, it, 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 it keeps the roads, mm -hmm. it keeps the road. But the only thing it has that approaches planning is the master plan, mm -hmm. which is every 10 years, and it gets updated, but mainly it gets rubber stamped from 10 years to 10 years. So the city doesn't have a place, and it needs to have a place, where individuals who are professional staff individuals plan the future. Yeah, there's no, and in most organizations, the chief operating officer who has strategic development as part of their part of their portfolio, and that does not exist. And we, Dennis and I have had this conversation before right. about inf, you know infrastructure. Right. Right. It, it is just something that that's part of you know in my professional experience, right. that was part of the chief operating officer's role. Strategic development and right. looking not just six months down the road, but where do we need to be in two years, and what is it going to take, you know, to march everyone to that point? But I, and again, I think to uh, unfortunately for the city, there's you know it was a small little town, and many that have been here for a long, long time, you know, and having come here for a long, long time, has seen that, but have never really moved to that model. Well, and part of I think the one of the things that many of us recognize who have been around here for a long time is that it was a small little town and some of the things that just were taken for granted before were, were you know easy to solve and yeah. you know it went away at the end of the season quote well, unquote. you know that's that's why a lot of the residents want to keep it yeah and, and i'm they not they don't want it to expand really. right and and, and, I, mean, and I don't want to sound negative but no i'm telling you they t talk right. to me all the time yeah. about yeah. it they're they're like up to here <laughs> believe me i know but it's, it's and and you know uh, over the course of years, it's been a lot of little things. Like I used to sit on the boards, and you know they'd pass a, 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 a project that, and it required maybe three or four parking slots. Well, they get a variance and give it the the, the project a one parking spot. Mm. So it just it, it more that stuff yeah. mushrooms. Well, see, it, it, Bob, you're absolutely right. It, 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 that you know, it's a lot of these little things. I used to see it. Like, what are we doing? It, it's, it's and the they nature, would just pass um, a variance and give it to them. And oh, there it's the nature of spots. a small town. It, yeah. it, and it just happened. Yeah, it's earlier, politics. I understand. Earlier this it, month, me. it just happened. There. Earlier this week, rather, it's happened I've once again <laughs> when a when a motel on Beach Drive was granted a variance for a, a parking overload. They did not provide enough that had existed since prior to 1993. No, no one in the city ever said to Motel X, uh, "You're, you're, you don't have enough parking spaces <laughs> for what the ordinance says you have to have." And when they did find out at this meeting earlier this week, uh, they were given a variance. So, so let's, uh, so every I time. Mean, that's just one's time. I mean, yeah. this has been and there's enough, uh, uh, there was a restaurant on the promenade who was given a variance to, uh, to absolve its responsibility for all of its parking. There was no parking. 
It was just a restaurant on the promenade. And if you want to go there, you better find yourself a parking space. See, so what's happened is our ordinances, and we get into this later, our ordinances have set up a situation where there's a tiny little barrier, and if you can't get over it, we'll let you, we'll help you over it. And, it's, and then God bless you for the rest of yeah, your life. it's added to the problem. And that is why, that is mushroom, why there is a parking mushroom. problem. Because I, I see it all the time. <laughs> right. if, you go, if you go to this chart here, this is kind of a, mm -hmm. my fun chart. I like right. this one. Uh, <laughs> you, you did have fun with this presentation. I did, I did. Yeah. Well, I'm trying, to, I'm, trying, I'm trying to make this a visual issue. No, we do. And, and so what, here's, here's, what, here's what the parking problem in Cape May in the beginning. You have page. Oh, page number. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay. It was in front of the linear. Yeah. Oh, it's in the front. other it's way. It's yeah. the other yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. Got it. So you, you have, this is Cape May. Cape May is a commercial dynamo. It's, it's more and more popular. Every time I pick up the internet, huh. some other website has said Cape yeah. May is the number one resort in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Leisure this week. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So uh, people are coming to Cape May in droves and they're coming for the reasons that are stacked on the left. Some of them stay for weeks, some of them stay for nights, some of them just for the afternoon, but they're all coming in cars. Mm -hmm. And so our parking, this is how many parking spaces we need for these folks because they're coming in and they want to enjoy Cape May. How do we handle that parking problem? Sometimes there's off street parking. Some of the, the more fortunate uh, venues have off street parking. Some of them have maintained off street parking for the visitors, like the restaurant around the corner from me rents a lot from the undertaker, and that's, that's good. We put meters on some public spaces. We have this tiny little annually revised and brand new every year shuttle service. And then we have spaces out on the street where you can find them. <coughs> now, the big block is, this is what we have been able to provide to accommodate these parking spaces. This is, the big block is what we need. We don't need, we, we don't need more meters. We already have meters. We don't need more spaces. We already have spaces for that. We need some place to, for these people to put their cars that are not ta testing the existing resources because they're already maxed out. Yep. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. And, and, and if we look at funding for such a purpose, we can't look at meters because they're, as, as Maureen just indicated a little while ago, they go to the general fund. It's, it's, uh, there's other sources of revenue, which I'll show later. But what we really need to fill that need block is money. And we also need alternatives, and that comes from somebody else's planning process, but we need alternatives. And we also need, at the bottom, I hope you can read it, is behavior modification. Because as a, as a world-class <laughs> resort drawing this number of people, the city needs to address the notion that you have to change the way people behave in Cape May. Yep. Well, in, in, in everything, but in particular in this one, how they behave in terms of where they're gonna put their car. <laughs> they're not, they're not gonna be able to go to uh, <clears throat> the fudge shop on the mall and park on the mall. They're not, they're not gonna be able to, stash their car wherever they feel like it. So their behavior's gotta change. Well, time's a currency here. Mm -hmm. So time is a currency here. They, yeah. they need to be, they need to buy into the idea that it's worthwhile for them to, yeah. you know, to have it, it, some way to quickly be able to quickly, drop off their car somewhere and, and, and be able to be able to move around and town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, uh, there's no question about and that. That's if the, it's yeah. If it's saving them time, then it's like, okay, that's Making something it, I can grab. Making it only slightly the, less Convenient. The behavior modification is true. They'll spend more time looking for a spot than it would take to park further away and walk that distance. Yeah. They want to park where they want to park. I found a really good article about this, and I'll send it to you, Dennis, to send it out to the committee, because it really, that's exactly what they talked about. Mm -hmm. You need to make it hard. You, you want people to start saying, this is crazy. I want to park yep. in a lot that's a mile, yeah, but, as long but, as I see, have but, resources but, to get to Kate May, despite the fact that Fred, back in the 90s, said it was a big problem, Cape May's never been able to do that. Right. And, and, and one of the key reasons they've never been able to do it is because, as Bob mentions, people who live here, the taxpayers, don't want to pay to get better parking for visitors. 
So they don't, they, uh, which, is, which is the way it is. Mm -hmm. Now, the, <laughs> the, ironic, the ironic thing about it is, the thing I mentioned to you last time, I think, was that, that even the commercial interest in the city should, ought to, should be getting behind this kind of thing because they're taxpayers too. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and they're the ones oh, that I are agree. dealing I with the problem. I think there should be a subcommittee of us with the business people. Let them come up with some ideas when the how idea, to finance well, it. For the idea, but I want to be able to say, here, here Kate May, uh, here's a big check. Yep. And now you put yourself together and work out solutions. Because the Amtrak committee is not going to, I mean, well, if we tried to do that, we'd be running out of town. Well, the biggest problem is we don't have any big lots, you know, well, for the parking, really. Well, we don't. But let's press on because I think we have an answer for that, Bob. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Let, so the first thing I think we, we need to base our funding proposal on is how many spaces do we need and how many do we have? Now, our municipal ordinances require that every commercial and residential property has got to provide a certain number of off-street parking spaces. <laughs> now, if, if you look at the first sheet, which is state-required parking, if you have a five-bedroom house, you have, to you have to have three parking spaces. Now, another section of our code says if you have a five-bedroom house, you have to have five parking spaces, but we'll get into that later. Um, and then in addition to the state mandated parking requirements, we have our own local municipal code requirements that say that if you're a bar, a restaurant, a theater, a stadium, we don't have any stadiums in town, a church, an auditorium, or a place of public, you have to have one parking space for every four seats. And that matrix goes down the line. You can read that yourself. So if you, if you walk through that, and, and then what I did was I calculated, I put, side by side, the mercantile licenses and the parking requirements from the ordinances. Mm -hmm. And this, it generated a number. Dennis, does this include Convention Hall? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The rules don't apply to the city. I'm sorry? The rules don't apply to the city. So these are non-city rules? The ordinances. <laughs> yeah. So what I, found, I actually say, found out today that do. the city apparently is paying Cape Island, um, Methodist Church for when they have private events at the convention center, they pay them, they give them a check, which yeah. apparently is very generous, is what I was told. Yeah, they do. Um, to park there. Well, the only reason I ask is because we are, uh, you know, as an example, we're going to a couple of, of the concerts at yep. City mm -hmm. or at uh, Convention Center, and you look at something like this, and right. it doesn't happen. You don't. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Right. <laughs> you better have somebody drop you off. <laughs> Take a bike. All right. So. So the next page is, is interesting, and I think I mentioned this last time. If you, if you took just what we know about mercantile licenses and what we know about our mandatory parking requirements, you can generate a list of how many parking spaces we need. Now, we can do that with only four of our categories. Restaurant seating, motels, hotels and guest houses, licensed residential rentals, and stores and sales. So, our code says we have to have the, the commercial interests who run these businesses have to provide 7,106 parking spaces on their own sites, off-site. Right? Now, that's what we know. What we don't know is how many employee parking spaces do we need? How many parking spaces are required for the non-seasonal residential housing, which means the locals, if you will. Uh, and we also don't know how many unlicensed seasonal rentals we're trying hard to find out, and every year it gets better. But this number of licensed rentals is based on the 1,000 and something that we had for this year. Uh, now, and the other thing is standing room and bars. No one has any idea how many people, even though every business in town has to pass a fire code inspection, which is a maximum occupancy, and that doesn't have anything to do with the one space per four seats. It's a different standard. 
uh, the, rest, the rest of the businesses, the real estate agencies, the, the doctor's offices, all the rest of that stuff, we don't know how many parking spaces they provide off-site. And this is the kind of thing I'm talking about when I say the city's not planning properly. We should know this. The city should know this. And when we, when we did the, uh, the mercantile license application, you remember that discussion, mm -hmm. we argued to include in the mercantile license application how many off-site parking spaces do you have? <coughs> we, we ask for that to be in part. Uh, well, some of this would be known if we had enforcement. There's no enforcement. Yeah, but the, but the, oh, you're right. You're right. But the easier way to, for, for the city to do it would be to put it in the mercantile license application. Did we do it? No. We took it out. No, but I'm talking about actual. Go out to Kearney some night and you count how many people are standing there. You'll find out. It, you'll, get, you'll have an estimate. Yeah, you could. Yeah. But see, the, the, the issue is, does, does, a bar, does a bar have to provide the parking spaces that the code requires, or does it have to provide the parking spaces that the uh, maximum occupancy standard applies? It's two different things, mm -hmm. and, and both, both of them are in statute. So this is why we, we say later on in this report that the, we need to look at all of the, light, all of the parking space requirements and make them fit together, make them standard, because they're not standard now. Because, for example, parking space, uh, one, one code says three spaces per five-bedroom house, the other one says one space for each bedroom, which would be five. So that's the kind of <clears throat> consistency we're dealing with. And then again, the last one, obviously, we don't know how many parking spaces people going to the beach need. <laughs> Probably a lot. Probably be able to figure that out from beach tax. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Dennis, these numbers that you have here, these are the number of re spaces required, spaces not the number of licenses. No, no, spaces required. Right. You know, like restaurant one per one seat. So, uh, All right. So, I mean, just just as a topside speculative example, uh, the next slide is interesting <clears throat> because. The Chamber of Commerce, the State Police, we all say we're very proud of the fact that Cape May an annually and on a daily basis has 50,000 people in it, 50,000 daily residents in Cape May. It's, it's the standard number. We heard the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. tell us that a couple uh, last year, I think she told us. Now, if you took a restaurant requirement of one per four, you'd need 12,500 parking spaces. We know how many actual spaces we have in Cape May. That's a hard number. That's, I mean, it's a hard number to get a hold of. I've been trying to get a hold of that, but I'll have it in the next couple of days, I hope. I'm Eric's trying to... out this week. Hmm? Eric's out this week. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm... Yeah, yeah. so, he'll, yeah. And I, I think Vince could probably... Uh... And that would... Vince probably has a rough number, but I would say Eric's going to be the one to... Okay. Know. Would you take care of that for Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'd be right. looking at just the parking meters or... No, no, mm -hmm. spaces. Total. Spaces. I mean, it... it and see these 12,500, that's 12,000 off-site, you know, probably on-site parking spaces. Right. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what would be required if we met our standards that we, in fact, have adopted for ourselves. If there are 50,000 people coming into it and, and they each have to have one parking space for four people, we need off-site, probably on-site parking spaces for 12,000 cars. So one of the and, and, and obviously we're not going to get that, but but the point is that's that's how when we talk about how big Cape May is going to become, right? This is what we're looking at. So one of the one of the the challenges with with looking at this is that there is a greater need and demand when you get sort of um, west of Madison, right? And in that that central core area, um, and really down al almost to the cove. And from the beach to Lafayette. Yeah. When you get further to the east side of town, so if you counted those parking places logistically, where people could park, don't park, but logistically could, you probably would get to the number. But it's the location that is. So I, I want to make sure that we're kind of clear on that because that's, that's why I was asking. So so it's really looking at Madison to uh, you know uh, to the Cove and Beach to Lafayette. In looking at how many parking spaces exist, I or, think. Or do we? Or do well, we, we? Well, I'm just trying to. I'm trying to put some kind of a box around it because. Oh no! What we're looking at. Because they don't count. What I think we're looking at is, is just simply 
the number of parking spaces on site that our law and code requires residents and businesses to have. Not including your driveway, spe specifically well, on yeah, the street. Yeah, right, yeah, and we, we passed ordinances that I say- I don't think I'm understanding what you, you want. So. Well, the only thing, Dennis, I would agree with Maureen, though. I think that we ought to have what is the total capacity for parking. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. But yeah, within uh, the area I'm of so, Madison. So, yeah, of course. Think the first step is how many do we have to have? The second question is how do we get them? And that's where your analysis comes in. Where are they? Where yeah, are they? Where, are they? where are they? Where are they? Where are they? In the hall. How many? Do if there's, if they're at Wilmington at poverty, park, yeah. that's that's not going to. To me, that's not a valued parking spot. The only unless way, there's good, unless there's a good transportation solution. Well, there is, but what? I'm, there's the key. I understand, there's but 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 one of the what one of the things I don't want to find is going down the rabbit hole is to say, oh, we have twelve thousand five hundred spots. Yeah, no, I, I, we're, yeah. We're, we're on the same, same page. page. Okay, all right. We're on the same yeah. page because I, because that I don't think because what the point. city hasn't done yet yeah. is come up with a comprehensive plan yeah. that brings those spaces into play. Correct. Correct. And that's I don't yeah. think Eric would be able to give us those numbers. I mean, he, I don't know that necessarily that's an exercise that someone has gone up and down every street and said four cars here, five cars here, six, including. That why, but why would we only include Cape May City? I, I mean, there's parking in West Cape May too, and but, but there's I, I no way to get. That, but there's no there's no way to get here from there. I understand that, but you're now entering into another borough, and you are mm -hmm. imposing okay. upon them. Good point. Let me. Let but, so I would the people say, from West Cape May use the businesses in Cape May. I understand so they that, don't Marty. Need to I, come I'm just in. saying that we're we're not. A, you know, we shouldn't be looking to expand. Our parking needs and our parking solution into another municipality well, without first at least looking at our own. Okay, let's go to this okay, page go because this answers your question. It's the page that says 362 Parking Trust Fund. Right. And we have this thing called the Parking Trust Fund, and it's it's almost completely useless. It, it serves almost no purpose. It only re applies to off-street parking lots as a solution to a parking problem for an applicant before a zoning board who is attempting to upgrade a building which existed prior to the ordinance being passed. That, that, that's basically it. Mm -hmm. uh, it only applies as the, one limited use. It only applies to the conversion of those old buildings. It charges the the contractor or whoever owns the property charges them five thousand dollars a space mm -hmm. which is ridiculous and it doesn't apply to anything else in the city so its potential revenue yield it is minuscule and later on after it was created a couple of years ago it was also used to collect the parking assessment which sits there, and the balance of that fund right now is about $190,000. How much? 190000 The last audit that I saw was 190000 And how long has it been in existence? It's about 20 years. <laughs> and it's only that big because they're putting the parking, the wow. $25 fee into it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it's a, it's a useless appendage that was left over from somebody's good idea. So I, I think we ought to recommend that it be revised to, to do some real things, which is to revise it, to make it the repository of all revenues the city puts into it, which frees up the ability for the city to redirect funds from other sources, parking meters maybe, or whatever. You don't mean any and all revenues, do you? Any and all revenues as determined by the city. So the, so the city could, in order to increase the, the uh, viability of the fund, they may want to put a piece of the parking lot, parking meters into it. It's up to them. Opening okay. up other revenues. You're not saying upwards. all revenues. Yeah. You're saying the city might say, let's put some parking meters. Exactly. Into but it's, it, it has I to be determined by the city. It's related to parking. Right. Is what it's yeah. Saying. Right. That's the city's determined. We're, gonna, we're empowering. Beach tag fees in we're, there, are you? We're empow well, it depends if <laughs> beach tag fees uh, have a jam on on parking needs, maybe yeah, oh, okay. maybe maybe they're, this is spitballing, but maybe the beach utility ought to be contributing to a parking fund. Well, you might want to, if this is your presentation, I, I just think it, 
Well, I, I think we're going to have to talk about how yeah, to, yeah. To, to scale this in a way right. that gets to the core of what the message is. But okay, but we'll but talk about that. The, in a the point of the recommendation uh -huh. is to make it the repo repository of parking-related funds. Right. Right. Which that are, makes sense. Right. right. Okay. Maybe say and any or all parking-related revenues. And yeah. So and now right. the second that one. Words. The second one is actually not a change. It's it's what the ordinance currently says which is interesting because it gets to the point that you guys were making just mm -hmm. a minute ago that the funds for the creation operation purchase lease lease mm -hmm. acquisition and maintenance of off street parking facilities so so down the road we've talked about and this goes into your report if we can go to uh cape may and say you have x number of acres in an empty lot somewhere we'll lease that from you mm -hmm. In exchange for police services, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Uh, okay, provide, we provide and maintain on street parking. It's, it, this is a key thing, too, because the spaces we have need to be properly marked. They need to be, uh, and that's going to cost money. They need to be enforced. They need to be regulated. If there's parking meters on them, they need to be maintained. And then the last one I think we should add is that this fund is to be used to provide, maintain, and otherwise contract for transportation services. And that's a broad concept, but that's where you get a comprehensive transit system into the mix. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and get away from the notion that it's April, uh, what are we gonna do about the shuttle service for this year? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the second, major issue in, in this recommendation is the current parking assessment it's, it's neither fair nor effective it's 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 almost akin in my mind to uh the parking meter raising the parking meter it's, just, it, it's an annoyance more than anything else because it has it has no logical purpose uh, we make everybody who gets a mercantile license pay 25 dollars for parking and it's been put in the parking trust fund, and, and, and yet the only person, the only entities we tax to help us with parking are the are the licensees, the mercantile licenses, and there are, there are other people, other entities, other places in town that are generating impacts on our parking situation. So I, I think it's a, it's a, and this is Russ's favorite point. It's, I don't think it's equitable. To, to just simply hit one person when other people are just as guilty of what you're doing. And is that $25 per license? Like not yeah. where the no. number of- It's the license, yeah. Whatever. So regardless of how large. Just, uh, regardless, yeah. of how large. regardless of how large. Regardless of how large. Just the license. And, just the license. and uh, it's just, let's just jump, jump down to right. the last point because y y you may be impacting our parking problem with hundreds of cars and you're going to give us twenty-five dollars right, right. for that. Right. So right. there's no. And somebody who does have a parking lot is still getting hit with that twenty-five dollars. No, uh, yes. As well? Yes. And yes. that's the other. Yeah. See, that's the other one. It's the other inequity about this whole thing. You, you, people who have already made the accommodation to get their customers off the streets still have to pay that. Yeah. Which is not right. It's just it's it's a it's a mean Plus, I, I have a small one bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. I have to pay $25. Somebody that's got a five bedroom you know, house. Not, yeah. 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 yeah, and, and the, re sense. the restaurant uh, the restaurant on the promenade that has no parking spaces mm -hmm. also pays $25. Right. Yeah. It's kind of. Not there. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, we got this point covered. Some license holders already provide sufficient on site parking. And, and, and they, do it, they do it in a lot of ways. They, they actually rent spaces right. for their customers like uh yeah, you know, Washington yeah. Yeah. so the the, the 25 dollars is it's almost i hate to be dramatic but it's almost insulting in its in its meat axe approach to solving a problem it doesn't solve anything it just annoys people mm -hmm. have to pay it. Mm -hmm. now what i think we should do is this we should charge the city with identifying exactly how many parking spaces everybody is required to have on their property for their use under our present code. And we already know 
what those requirements are. So it shouldn't be, and this is, this is another reason why I wanted to have this as an item in the mercantile license application, because it would have been so much easier. This could have already been done by now. And why it was taken out, I don't know, but that's water under the bridge. But there's four key variables that identify parking requirements. And, and the first one is the approved site plan. Now, back in 2019, I think we put it on our list, 2016 it was, the, the city did try and do this. They tried, they, they tried to identify exactly how many parking spaces were required of each mercantile licensee. And there was actually an ordinance drafted at that point. However, this it never went anywhere, and this was three administrations ago, and I, I'm sure that <coughs> it has wound up in some sort of shredder somewhere. But there was an attempt to do this. I think this is the way to approach it. <coughs> to, to use our, our complete matrix of statutory requirements and identify a number of off-site of on-site parking spaces that are required. And the approved site plan is the key. We can look at mercantile seat licenses. We also need to look at the fire code, the occupancy code, because every establishment has to have one. It's, all, it's data that's already available in our fire department. And then we have to look at those RESIS standards. Uh, for RESIS standards apply to everybody, not just businesses, they apply to everybody. And that's really the equitable approach. Uh, but we, we have a list of those earlier in the, in the report. And where would employees come in? Which one of the four would uh, we and, determine? And the approved site plan would be, you, you have to, and, and anything that goes back to our code <coughs> mm -hmm. includes employees. Because okay. hotels and motels, they say it's one, sp one space per employee on the mm -hmm. largest shift. Mm -hmm. And then another one says one space f per employee, period. Mm -hmm. So. Either way, we, we but if you haven't been to planning in 40 years, how, the business has changed some. Mm -hmm. Where would we get the count from? We, you have to go back to the, the owner is it has to go back and, okay. and find that site plan. Okay. And and I think our planning office is extremely uh, clever. They went the other night. They went back yep. 30 years yep. and found so, a yeah. document. You saw that. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty close. Cool. You have to go. To yeah. So, Dennis, just as an example, so the restaurant, unnamed restaurant that's on the mall that has no parking. Right. So what would happen to that restaurant? Well, well okay. under this proposal. Under the, let's go down here. Let's go to the next space. So they would, sorry? Go to the next, uh, uh, we just reviewed the four <laughs> sources of seating requirements. The next, yep. <coughs> the next bullet says that we have an annual fee that is required for each parking space not provided on site. So it's just a matter of how much is the fee. I think where Ross was going was we would have to repeal all of the variances. That, 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 that's where I was coming No, no, hold it, hold it, hold it, time out. This is a, mm -hmm. this is a critical point here. Mm -hmm. uh, a variance, because you can't meet the zoning requirements is one thing. The application of an assessment is quite another thing. Okay. Because. Yep. Got you. Yep. It, it, and, and, and we have the the, the so ordinances they, are replete with situations mm -hmm. like this. So Every, ideally, what would have happened if this would have been in, in advance? So you make the variance at the same time. You remind them, by the way. Oh yeah. If yeah, you I have mean, forty seats. You have forty seats. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be paying. So hopefully, the price of your meals reflects that. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, see if, if, right? I mean, well, how are they going to pay mean, for I, it otherwise? Yeah, I, I, Somebody's Exactly, but you, the the rest, <clears throat> the prices are already at the high end of. Well, I'm just I'm just suggesting yep. that. And for and for a lot of reasons yep. that have let's, to do with supply chain, so, personnel, well, and everything let's, else, it's. Just, let's go back. Let's go back. Dennis, before we leave that page, though, I think that that's a really critical point to make that the assessment is independent of any zoning, zoning variances. Um, yeah. variances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Let me make a note of that. That you're right about that. And I'm sure a lot of this goes down to the fear factor of the bottom line is when they were doing these site plans, et cetera, the bottom line is where were all those spots going to come from? <laughs> the city. Well, and, really and I think also at like the that. time, you know, as, as Bob has said, some of this has happened over sure. the course Absolutely. of 20, 30, Absolutely. 35 years. No one, no one could envision right. 
that we would find ourselves doing a look back and saying, you know, why did we allow all of these right. really, you know, we, well, you could be critical and saying missteps, but the fact of the matter is it's an isolation. And, um, you know, I, I know of a particular area right now in the city where there's six major projects going on with houses being built all around, you know, four or five homes. You know, they were, they're all independently evaluated and looked at. If you really had, you know, a, a, you know, the global vision, you would say maybe that's not a, you know, shouldn't be permitted that we allow six major construction projects all occurring at the same time in a small, con very concentrated area. But and, and to respond to and that's not even an ordinance, or you know, it just yeah. would make common sense. In and I think that's what some of this issue. Right. You go to the page that says who owns the parking problem. And the, the, the parking problem is owned by the commercial reality of Cape May. It, it, people come, uh, people operate businesses here, they attract people to their businesses. The city provides services and facilities to keep those people who come protected and safe. That's, that's part of our responsibility. But the, the provision of those services should not be on the taxpayer. They should be on the beneficiaries of the, the services and the users of the services. This is, it's essentially a user fee concept, like a beach fee. And it's not being paid by the guy who comes from Montauk to go to, uh, to, go to the Marion Inn, whatever it's called now. It, it's by the person who's providing that service to them. It, it, it's a shared cost. And uh, rather than put it on, like a parking meter is a, 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 a right on the user. Uh, this fee would be spread across the entire corporate commercial structure, enterprise. commercial structure of the enterprise and stuff. For instance, not to pick on this unnamed restaurant, <laughs> but if that restaurant set up uh, an arrangement where all of their patrons, required spaces are met off-site, were met off site. They worked out something in West Cape May. Yep. And they, they pay nothing. And they would pay nothing. Right. Right. And then they would tell their patrons, yep. this is where you go for your parking, and we will and we'll have an LSD shuttle LSD you in and out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm, I'm not looking. And there are, other, there are other tourist cities that do exactly that. Absolutely. And, and, and by the way, there are businesses in this town who currently do that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there are businesses, businesses in this town who have their own shuttles, and they'll go around yes. and pick right, you up exactly. and drive and you pick off. People. Right, that's exactly right. 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 See, see, I'm not, I'm not I, the, the, the $25 mistake, I'm not, I don't want to repeat that. I agree with you. Uh, I, want, I want to be able to say, if you're impacting our municipal services, you'll have to pay for it. You need, you, there's a solution. Either well, that's it's this or that. Because yeah. sometimes what... I'll say it later. Right. Dennis, say it where later. does the resident, though, that doesn't have parking fall in this? How are they assessed? Uh, well, we have a, an ordinance that allows a resident to essentially uh, rent and dedicate his own parking mm -hmm. space. Anyway, mm -hmm. so the, he's covered. And what's the fee on that? $100? Uh, I think, you know, maybe we ought to, let, let's go to the page that says, I, wanna, I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead of myself here, but. Let's go to the page that talks about revenue, because this is really, what's the next one we're going to talk about? The first, the last one was uh, you pay an annual fee, uh, separate and apart from any, anything you did at the zoning board, and that uh, it, there's no fee for anybody who provides off. In any way, they do it. They can do it, like parking lots and shuttles and whatever. So if we look at this, a current revenue stream regarding parking uh, is except these four items. The public lots are the, uh, basically the two lots next to Collier's mm -hmm. and uh, next to the hardware store. Uh, the parking fee revenue, there's, that's the $25. That's, that was 31000 this year. And these permits are people uh, in one of two ways. People who get a permit to park in their own driveway across their own driveway and people who pay a per get a permit to have a dedicated space in front of their house. You can also get a permit to park in the 
city parking lots. What's that? You can get a permit to park in yeah, the that's, city Yeah, that's that's public lots. lots. Right. Oh. That's public lots. That's not just the meters there, that's the permits no. there. No, no, the meters are, are, are two million one hundred thousand. These this this public lot fifty four thousand, mm -hmm. those are the revenues from the Collier lot and the uh, the Swain lot. And what's the parking fee again? It's which one? The, the parking fee is the twenty five dollars we put on every mercantile. They, we make fifty four thousand dollars a year on parking permits for those two parking lots. Yeah. Yeah. More than I would think. Yeah, it is more, and they're used primarily by employees of the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the, I'm sorry, I missed it. I got the public, the permit, the public lots. What's the parking fee, 31000 The $25. The $25. The $25. Oh, uh, that's the $25. Right. Okay. Gotcha. And these are all, well, this is last year's budget numbers, but they're. And the potential you're talking about would be in addition to the current. Is that right? What's that? What is this to the right? The potential. Oh, the potential is this. Is in, in if addition we, if we took to the that, current. If, if we took that parking impact assessment that we recommend right and we set a number let's say we put it at $75 per space the city would be able to yield on the known 7100 spaces um, this is all just big picture stuff but if you took 7100 spaces and, and multiplied it by 75 the city would yield a half a million dollars so would this say again just trying to bring it bring it down so would this say, and I'm not saying 75, 50, doesn't matter, but that if I had a parking space that was not in my driveway, but in front of my house, is that what you mean by the space? No, if you don't have a, if you have a parking space, how many bedrooms do you have? Four. Do you have, you have to have four spaces on your own property. On my own property. Right. So you only, let's but just say you have a if I don't have four yes. on my own property. If you have yes. two in your own property. And then I, that, this is the additional I pay. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. Right. Only if you're asking for a space. If No, no. No, he's required by code. The code requires him but to you have. you got a variance. Variance, no. I just said. Right. No, the variance, we just said. Yeah. They're not right. paying anything. So they're not asking for a dedicated spot, but they don't have parking. Right. Yet, all right. Right. So where does we're not getting revenue on that no. use, that need. So Dennis, yes, you, are. you yeah, also you are. how so? You also say that this burden is not on the taxpayers, but if Russ, a taxpayer, is required have to have four spaces and he only has two spaces and he's still paying it is a tax. for his Yep. Yeah, right. <laughs> but but the the city ordinance, uh, he's... It's a burden on the taxpayer that doesn't a, have enough spaces. Right. And may have decided to, to build beyond, you know, uh, build their house may have been... I might need a, ver a zoning variance to build it, more driveway space. You might, or you or you got a zoning variance to build more bedrooms. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm teasing yeah. a little yeah. bit. But yeah. Well, and are you going by, the, you're going by the city ordinance versus, for instance, the state was... Well, there's also a state requirement. Yeah, 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 that's, that's right. one of the which things... Which one do we decide which on? Which one do you That's, do. that's not our call. No, 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 but right. I'm saying that needs right. to be taken yeah. into that, consideration. That needs to be... Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Because which, which, which rule are you applying to Russ now? I think if we got that far into it, we would be at almost to the finish line. <laughs> this, is, this, this is a skeleton. Yeah. We, we we haven't decided. Let the, the council yeah. needs to decide. Well, two things: Do you want to take this approach? Yeah. yeah. And then, if you do want to take this approach, what do you have to do to make it work? Yeah. And and we'll, be fair. Huh? Make it work and be fair. And make it work and be fair. And, and the the idea here is it's a really a, actually a simple one. That if we have re ordinances that require off street parking, and you can't meet that, mm -hmm. you're causing the parking problem. Yep. Yeah. But the, uh, now, now, even if you're down on Wilmington have, Avenue where no one wants to park, hmm? what if you're down on Wilmington Avenue where no one wants to park? Marine doesn't want to park down there. Well, we're going to take that money and we're going to fund a comprehensive transit system so that people who come to this town the, are going to be shuttled to, into town from the lot we're going to build there, right, right next to Maureen's house. Right, <laughs> right Mo? Right. But, mm. Uh, okay. Miss, missing from this, though, Dennis, is there is a residential need, too. Yeah. So, for example, the, the, the restaurant on the promenade, they're now going to have to start paying for spots, even though they have a variance. Right. The homeowner that has no spots and has gotten a variance, have to there pay needs for to be an, a fee there, too. There is, right? Yes. Here. No, because only if you require, if you pay, if you ask for a spot. 
correct. No, that's not what Dennis just said. No. No, the ordinance requires you to. It requires you. Unless you have get a variance. No. You've got a variance for what you ask for to expand upon your lot coverage for additional building, accessory use, whatever it might be. Yeah. You didn't necessarily get a variance for your parking spots. And you didn't get a variance that you won't have to pay a fee. Right. And, and I've never heard of anybody well, at the wait. zoning meetings saying, we'll give you the variance, but you have to pay a fee. Well, right, because it doesn't it exist doesn't, right now. Right. Exist. Oh, right. Okay. No, I'll, no, I'm saying that's where there's a hole. In, right. There's, a, well, there's, a, no, there's, me, a, there's a, a gap in the bucket here let for me the fill, Let me fill the hole for you. Mm -hmm. if, uh, currently, we have these permits that we give out. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a parking space, you get a permit. Right. But here's, the, here's how the permit works. It, it's in front of your house. Mm -hmm and it's restricted to you. Mm -hmm. It's a no parking mm -hmm. zone. So you're paying, and, and, and they're primarily in, 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 given to homeowners mm -hmm. that are down by the beach and in mm -hmm. the center of town. It, it's a dedicated parking space mm -hmm. for them. Right. That's not the same as what we're talking about. Because, because if that person wants a dedicated space so they can park in front of his own house, he's paying for that. Right. Uh, we're, we're talking about an individual, let's say that individual uh, who has that dedicated parking space doesn't want to dedicate it then he can doesn't have to get that permit right he can he can go for so the you're suggesting that they will have to pay an assessment as well yeah but it, they're not in the 7106 no they're not right no but they can they can they can either continue to take the permit and save your spot mm -hmm. or they can pay the $25 or $50 or whatever it is, whatever it is. and these things are pretty expensive by the way these, these dedicated right. parking spaces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Right. So it is a new revenue source. Revenue source. Yes. Yeah. And it does and it does apply yeah. to residential as well as commercial. Yeah. It's any okay. residents yeah. any resident that is using on street parking. Correct. Right. And and well, no, that on, doesn't have enough parking. That doesn't have enough driveway. parking in their space. Space. So I have a driveway that holds three cars and I don't use it. I use the street instead. I don't have to pay. Well, no, then you don't you're, have, yeah, no, well, oh, oh, you don't have to pay. Yeah. But why are you using the street? We got three spaces. Right, 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 right across the street. Well, the reason is because you put three cars into right. the driveway and then pull out the first car. You probably got to right. pull out the other two. Happens all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get it, and that's that's a, sort of almost like an esoteric wrinkle in this situation. Oh, no, it's probably a hundred spaces. Well, I don't know that you're going to cover 100%, though. That, that's really kind of hard because you, you could be pulling it out to have company, too, right? Yeah, well, and, and what does I, I don't know that I, w I would say that we necessarily would want our police or our code enforcement spending their time chasing yeah. that down. Yeah. That's kind um, of again, I think we could go down a rabbit hole with some of this. Yeah. yeah. I, I, th I think that keeping this at the high level to figure out where you're going to get the 80 20 on this is yep. really what we need to do. Exactly. And, and, and by the way, there was a case in front of the zoning board a couple of weeks ago <clears throat> about this kind of a situation. They, they had all street parking. Uh, they had a driveway and a garage that would be two spaces. Uh, but their garage was, is where they kept all their stuff. So they couldn't use that. <laughs> but I mean, almost like, so what? You have, you have two spaces, technically. If, mm. if you, and then, yeah. If you want to fill it with your stuff, that's your your problem. It's not a lot of money, by the way. This is not a lot of money. No, it's it's not. So, and I also think that so uh, just. Well, hold on. Let me before you. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, let, let me throw a couple caveats on the potential side, so that you just understand the full picture. Number one, the seventy-one hundred spaces is only a raw calculation. Mm -hmm. Lots of folks in that group will be able to provide. All, on-site parking so that number would be reduced mm -hmm. there's a lot and if you go back to the other sheet what we don't know there's tons of data that need to be collected about how many actual spaces we need over and above the 7100 so that that was just used in this context to show you the kind of revenue yield you could generate based on ident but, idea. based on identifying mm -hmm. required spaces actual spaces and a fee for the ones that don't match. So, so Dennis, on this page, I, I would suggest taking the twenty-five dollars off. That's the now we're back to the annoyance category, and then adding a, a hundred-dollar one. I agree with that. By the yeah, way, I think I fifty or seventy-five or hundred dollars per seat per, per year. season per year. That's like a drop in the bucket. So, so take the per, take the twenty-five off and put a hundred-dollar one on. They're 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 really yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I would agree. 
I, I t I, Look, uh, you're going to have... Now, that's wanna, per space, you know. Per space. Per space. Right. So if you're, oh, if you're required to have if you're, your restaurant... Yeah, no, no, no. So I think it's not per year. So what you're saying right. is every night you're open as a restaurant, you have 40 patrons. You're supposed to have 25 parking spaces. Are we saying that you're going to pay $100 a year for that parking space? That's what I understand. Yeah. You okay. Would. All right. Fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I agree with everyone. I'm just trying to clarify no, what no, we're no, all no. understanding. I think it was $100 about. per year. Okay. It's, all right. it's an annual fee. Okay. Annual fee. I agree with you 100%. Take the 25 off. Okay. All right. So. And, and you know, actually, before, be, before we do this, the city, this is one of the things the city has to do, and it's on the sheet that says parking requirements are disjointed and inconsistent. If you look at that sheet, you'll see how badly they are disjointed and inconsistent. Some of them are based on square footage. Yeah. Well, but I think that the square footage requirement does make sense. For example, how many, how do you determine how many parking spaces a retail shop yeah, right. No, I'm not so, uh, uh, yeah, you're going to have to pick a metric that is applicable right. across right. Right. But a broad, I'm saying a broad, a broad yeah. group, yeah, I, I, right. from I, a restaurant to a bar to a, a retail store. Yeah, yeah, technically, I think square footage and the uh, maximum occupancy concept is probably better. Yeah, than you're just better off picking two metrics and saying that's, that's what's it. going to be yeah. a benchmark. Right. Because right. if not, then you can find yourself... Having done some of these exercises on the revenue side, you can pick a million matri uh, different metrics yeah. um, to be able to do a calculation. Um, but if you can pick one that has the broadest application exactly. across yeah. many, and that would be like number right. three. And, right. and I think with this, you know, the businesses have been like, you know, we pick on them, but this is we're really looking at this across the board. I mean, there's this is going to be for residents as well. So, yeah. so I think one of the things, Dennis, I would recommend. There's a lot of data here. This is good background information. Um, I, I think this needs to be sort of uh, called down a bit for a presentation to council, um, in my opinion. Yeah. I think you really just want to get the salient facts out in front. This could stand, you know, as a body of work, um, but I don't necessarily think that going through this entire presentation, in my opinion, I think you start to lose people. Yeah. People start yeah. drifting yeah. off in, yeah. in their thoughts when they get this type of background information. It's too much. Right. To me, this is really comes down to five key factors. There needs to be a solution. We believe that we, have, we can identify metrics to be able to, um, you, you know, uniformly and objectively yeah. and a way apply. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is needed from the city is X, Y, and Z. What is needed from, once that information is there is if MTRAC could put together. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think that has, that's. But well, also I would suggest. It's crisper and, and you know. The, the concept of fairness and equity. Yes, yes which we've it's, tried to be. We try to do, right. and yeah. I, I, because to me that's part of the issue here. Yeah, is yeah. That oh, sure. yeah. yeah. We have an uh, unequitable right. deal. Right, right. And I think, I, and just this, to me this comes down to the, you know, four or five slides that just talk to the core of the problem. Everyone knows. Well, it's easy to do. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, it, because everyone knows it exists and knows that there's a lot of history associated with this and there's been, you know, starts and stops and, you know, finger pointing can go abound and we can all talk about, you know, how it morphed from being a small problem into a large problem over a course of many, many years. But really what you're trying to do is say, look, let's pick a, let's pick a uniform and objective metrics you know, the committee's talked and we might recommend that it be square footage and, uh, you know, the... Um, Make it clear up front though, yeah. that it's not, we're not proposing what the parking solution is. No. We're, we're proposing you, a funding solution. An, an ability to, you know, uniformly it's and objectively, tracks. right. So it's maximum occupancy yeah. and square footage. It applies across a, a broad spectrum. We're not saying necessarily a business has to pay these fees if they can find their own internal solution that meets the needs of what they're required by code, you know. But if not, this is a way that we may be able to fund a solution right. going forward. So that's, that's how I view this, um, because I, I do think it's important information, but I don't want it to get lost in a larger. Why are we wearing the same? I don't know why we're wearing the same. But glasses. I guess the only question with that, Maureen, as we know, people on the committee too have different. Like some people may be wanting that solution. Explaining why we're not. No, doing I that think right the now. I think the council is fully um, understands that you first need to be able, in my opinion, and I, you know, I can talk to the fellow. You, but I don't know. Well, no, I think uh, you know, no one is going to expect that a group is just going to be able to come up with a solution because 
you can just point to this page that it's says just, it's yeah. not an easy solution. It's not an easy solution. Right. And I think that what it basically says is the reason why sometimes this has not gone forward is because and, and Dennis, you know, said it. Advisory committees sometimes are not, you know, the value of people being involved is is tremendous. But there are some times that you need people who are professionals and experienced to be able to do this and put forth something that can be reacted to. Rather than having something as a homegrown solution bottoms up, this really needs to be a top down, in my opinion. Um, there's just sometimes that that is the most effective way to be able to get something out there that is applicable and that can be has movement and can take its own yeah, life. And, and the actual, the core of the proposal is, uh, in its skeleton form, is the $25 fee is a useless exercise. Get rid of it mm -hmm. and put a fee based on how many parking spaces you can't provide. Right. Now that's, right. Isn't, isn't that really what we're Pretty talking much. about? Right. So. And we're trying to use a metric that that makes it yeah. equitable across all Find out a way to businesses. calculate that right. number and, and yes. apply it right. then, broadly. And that's, that's, your, that's your revenue generator. And the option is for a business that, that some have is to find their own um, yeah, which means to be able to yeah. um, I, I t I totally, offer. I think we're all on, all on the same page yeah. with that one. I think the only other secondary thing that I was thinking about and it came out of that whole bike safety yesterday, the amount of cars that come in from North Cape May and um, you know um, West Cape May to the beach. So again, going back to that beach fee, like we don't have that number, but what's the mechanism to do something with them to prevent those cars from coming into the city. Um, not for not for this, but maybe part two of this. How do we work with them? Well, do we do we have the jitney going out there? Do we have transportation? That's part of the solution stuff. That's agreed. not that's not agreed. what we're charging. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. agree. Right. But it Our is still a reality that we could situation. end up we could still end up with that issue, okay, because they're not using any of the other services. We're not they're not using the restaurants and all those places we calculated. They're now using yeah. something that we well, have. Well, we actually talked about it earlier. Uh, it, it, it's the, um, <clears throat> we, we may want to recommend that there be an assessment out of the beach utility fund. But again, do we have the parking spots for it? We still need to consider, we can take the money from there. No, no, the money we, the money we want to use to fund, fund things we're not doing right Agree. now. Agree, agree, okay. Dennis, one of, the, I'm sorry, one of the things that was a strength, though, of this presentation was building the case that this is not falling on the, on the shoulders of the residents. Yeah. It, it's important for council to know from the start, right. this, is a, this is the businesses benefit from this, they're the ones that should be paying. Right. Businesses including residential yeah. properties that are being rented out. And that's well, why I think if you them. try and get this to a, a crisp four and five page people on that committee will then focus on the facts that you want them to, not all of the reasons why it hasn't worked in the past, which, you know, people are, get uh, mirrored. Just, in to, just to clarify that, though, are we saying that residents, there aren't any residents that don't have enough parking, that don't use their homes for business purposes? Because I do no, think it's that... A, it's a small portion, so it's... it's so I, I just want to be careful, yeah. because I do think you know, that there are residents who don't rent their homes that don't have enough parking sp spaces. No, the, yes. the part of it that I was referring to is we shouldn't be raising taxes to pay for the parking solution. We're not raising taxes. Yes. But we're raising fees for those people for that those don't people have adequate. Use right. So right. use fees. I, that's all. Yep. I, I just want to make sure we don't go down, you know, over promise mm -hmm. uh, because I, I happen to know some people, I'm sure some of you do too, that don't rent their homes, but they don't have enough parking. Right. Don't have any parking. Uh, yes, that's what I said by not enough. <laughs> yeah, and then we, for those folks, we would simply have to explain to them that state law and Cape May's code requires them to have parking. And we're not recommending that. That's the, that's the law. I mean, we're not. Oh, it, it, well, it happened. It just how much time do you have? <laughs> yeah, it, it happened for a lot of reasons. Yeah, a lot of reasons. All right. Okay. I, I can easily do this, and I'll I'll uh, cut it down to a, a shorter version and send it out to you. And uh, and check with Aaron. Yeah. See would you if there's call Zach and uh, have him make sure it's on the agenda? Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right.
But once again, Dennis, just uh, uh, kudos. I mean, you obviously spent a lot of time on this. I know you how much you love putting these together, but it still <laughs> yeah. takes you a lot of time. So thank no, you. It was, it was very, very uh, yeah. informative. I'll talk, I will talk to Zach, and I'll make sure that Aaron knows okay. that you Are need to Are you going to leave because we have uh, one? Oh. Do you have anything on an update? Uh, just really quickly, yeah. uh, we, we've had a couple of meetings, and we're, I think we're on our way towards a solution for the very first contracts that are coming up, which is the courts, the, the shared oh, courts. Good, okay? good. Um, so those, those, that contract expires with Cape May Point in uh, March of 24. That's oh, okay. the first one. That's the first one. Uh, and we're collecting the data to be able to understand what, the, for example, the caseload is, what percentage of the cases does Cape May Point make up, and therefore that reasonably is the port percentage of the of the cost of the courts that they should pay. Yeah. Uh, and then get away from the um, contractual 2% escalation and put in a, a, a okay. cost of living type of adjustment. Who are you meeting with on from KMA Point? Uh, well, so the, the internal discussions right now are with um, Chris Gillenschwartz, oh, okay. Kevin, um, Marty, Steve, and I. Chris Gillen Schwartz will be the agent who will once we've we've come up with a recommendation, um, and it gets presented and everyone. So KMA feels. points not involved, engaged. Not yet. not at this right. point in time. Um, we're just trying to come. Yeah, we're trying to come up with sort of the baseline metrics and how to look at this objectively and and have something to recommend. MTRAC would be recommending it to council um, or to you know city administration and the mayor as to what we feel is the best approach. We've that, also asked Chris to um, begin conversations, at least feel out uh, Mayor Sabo to, um, for, the, for the, the West Cape May agreement to be able to understand what some of the possibilities might be. We have some ideas, but we, we want to make sure that... That, that makes sense. The only, the only reason I, I, I ask bless is you. because March of 24 will come around, bless you, will come sure. around a lot faster. And, and for Cape May Point, given a small community, if it has impact, they're going to need a lot of. They're going to need lead time. Yeah. So I lived in Cape May Point. Yeah. Sure. So, so we don't think. I don't. It's, I don't think it's going to increase. No, it's not going to be. Significant. I, it's just a, a, a more rational approach. Yeah. Different. So when we look at it, we under everyone would understand why the, it was structured in that way. And then that will serve as right. the basis for mm -hmm. the rest of the agreements as we go through, where basically we're tr we're starting to go towards a rational way of determining what the cost that should be shared is, and then making sure that we don't lock ourselves into numbers when inflation is 7% and we, we only are getting a 2% um, uh, bump. Sounds, sounds great. Because much of this has, um, a, a portion of this is personnel related. Personnel related costs that are salary, health and welfare, things that are out of the control of all of the parties involved. So you want to make sure you're covering those expenses. Uh, and there is one last point. Bob brought it up. He asked me to mention it. Uh, but Maureen, would you uh, express to the council that the Amtrak is a little disappointed that the uh, low-speed vehicle ordinance wasn't enacted for this year? Okay. You mean the one that, that with the fees? With the fees and the, and the decals and the enforcement provisions. It's a, this summer is going to be a lot more complicated on this issue than it was last year and we thought we had a solution at least to approach a solution and we're disappointed that it didn't get done. <coughs> it went, Could I ask why it wasn't? It went to the council plenty of time to do it for this year and uh, didn't know. I mean because we limited it to low speed vehicles in order to try to make it so that it was more um, amenable if you will. So I think it was presented and I'm not this is not an excuse prior to me being on council, so I don't know why that did not go through as you know, an <coughs> approval. It was the, my, that pamphlet that I created. Which is great, by the way. Which it was my uh, attempt to make sure that we were at least addressing the public safety issues. Yep. I will say that um, the uh, KMA Police Department, the chief, um, they've got it. On, they've had it on their Facebook page at least four times since the beginning of the season. It has been gi given out to every mercantile license, um, who, anyone who comes in. And I explained before, we met with every company that rents on this island, and they are required to hand that out also during they the time of rental. So you're, we're confident they have enough supply to make. I have that. given them the, uh, anything, and we have extra. Um, the Cape May County Chamber has it on their website. 
They also have the, them in the Welcome Center, and they're also up at Convention Hall. And, and the chief yesterday told us that they have, in fact, been doing enforcement to the point where they've actually had to make some arrests because they've gotten some real grief from people. So I think that the police are, in fact, this year, I will say, stepping up to the plate. Um, which is I why. See yeah. what I'm convinced yeah. are right. underage drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, again, which is why I, I think he's he's putting, the, he just put it again on the Facebook page absolutely. tonight. So I, I do think that they're seeing it. I agree with Mary and that they're concerned about it. Um, and, um, you know, people who are seeing it are also reporting it. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? No. Thanks. Anybody want to bring up some? Good work. Thanks. Thanks. Good work for everybody. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you. Uh, who wants to make a motion to adjourn? I guess you do, right? We're adjourned. Adjourned. <laughs> so let it be written, so let it be done. So, Maureen, that was the issue they wanted.